Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Kellen here again with Droid Life. So one plus six still in house. We're working through to that full review. The phone's also available now at one plus's store. You can get it for uh, as low as 529, which is actually a pretty good deal for what you get. Uh, you can upgrade it from there. 579 and 629 get you different colors, more storage, more RAM, that sort of thing. And since you can buy it, well, we, we figure it's time. It's time to give you the first 10 things to do with the one plus six. The first thing we're going to tell you to do is, well, we're going to address the notch. So yes, this phone has a notch. Most Android phones are going to have one at this point in time, or at least for 2018 until we get to the point where notches can go away and we get full screen devices. But so we, we want to talk about what to do there. So you, if you don't like it, you can kind of hide it. So you might as well set this up and we basically just go into settings, display, and then there's this section for notch display. So you tap on that, you get to decide, do you wanna see the notch at all times? Do you wanna hide the notch? If you have it checked, it looks like this. You can see your notch. If you don't wanna see that notch, you tap hide, put some black software uh, color tweak up top so that when you're on your home screen or something, it looks like this. It doesn't remove the notch, but it does hide that notification area behind a black bar. So it kinda of goes away. Anyway, you decide. I'm not here to uh, tell you which way to go. I'm going to go with the notch because, well, it's new and whatever. We like playing with new stuff. So anyway, that's the first thing you should do is, is figure that out. The second thing we'll talk about is the alert slider. So on the right side of the OnePlus 6, so alert sliders from OnePlus in the past were actually over here on this left side where the volume rocker is. They've moved it on this phone over to the right side. So the alert slider, for those not familiar, I'll show you. If you slide it all the way up, your phone is actually in silent mode. And if you hit the middle spot, it goes into vibrate mode. And then if you go all the way down, it goes into full sound, ringer on, that mode. You should just become familiar with this. It's, uh, it's a really handy switch. It's one of those things we wish more phone makers would put on their devices. So silent to vibrate to ringer to vibrate to silent you get it so you just kind of slide it up and down it's a really good feeling button too it just slides really nicely um, you can go into settings and there is actually an alert slider section so if you tap on that you can customize a little bit of what happens when it's in silent for example you can say alarms will still ring even when you're in silent um, but it does mute media or you can have it be silent and not mute media if you want um, same thing goes for vibration you can make sure that alarms are still coming through and then when it's set to ring you basically just there's one setting in there to also allow it to vibrate when calls are incoming so anyway alert slider it's right there on the top right just above the power button uh, it's not an actual button you click it just slides up and down all right from there i will say let's work on security for a second and we always do that by going into settings and look for security and lock screen so we're going to tap on that and in here i'm going to tell you set up a screen lock so i have mine just set up to a pattern um, but you can set it to a pattern a pin or a password to make sure it's secure if you have it swipe or none that's that's an unsecured uh, lock screen do not recommend that if you leave your phone behind somewhere or lose it or someone steals it you kind of want some protection on there. So anyway, I'm going to go with pattern. From there, you want to set up the fingerprint reader. So don't mind the fingerprints all over the back side of the phone here. That's what happens when you put a mirror finish on a phone. But there is a fingerprint reader right there on the back, right under the dual camera above the OnePlus button, or I'm sorry, the OnePlus logo. God, look at all those fingerprints. So hey, how about tip number zero should have been buy a cloth because you're going to have to clean your phone constantly. Anyway, let's set up that fingerprint reader. It's one of the best in the business. Uh, OnePlus's fingerprint reader has been fast for a long time. So anyway, you have to have a secure lock screen in order to set up fingerprint readers. Um, I'm sorry to set up fingerprints. And then from there you, uh, well, you just hit add fingerprint. And when we add a fingerprint, it's going to ask you to confirm that that secure lock screen. And then you just start setting your finger over it and you set it and lift it and set it and lift it and set it and lift it and set it and lift it until it tells you you are good, including getting the edge of your finger and then you're done. Then you have a fingerprint set up. I set up both index fingers. I tell you the guys this a lot because if I'm holding this in my left hand, I want that index. If I'm holding it in my right hand, I want that index. So you can set up other fingers. Like I just set up my middle finger, but the index fingers are probably the best bet. And uh, from there, all you do is uh, set your finger over there, unlocks. And again, one plus is fingerprint. Scanners are some of the fastest in the business. You should use it. The, the other thing too, though, if we're still talking security is there is a face unlock on here. And their face unlock, again, you're gonna have to confirm whatever your password is. Um, I have my face set up. Um, if I remove it though, let's go ahead and remove it, and you add face data, um, all you do is, it's kind of, not gonna be able to show you this on camera, but you just put your face 
in that sort of phase outline and it records your face data and then uh, it will then unlock if you look at it. And it's ac it's actually pretty quick. You, you may as well set that up and fingerprints. I don't know that I would just go face recognition. I don't know how reliable it really is. Fingerprints are reliable. Face is maybe just there as an added bonus. Uh, in case you do look at your phone, it will unlock pretty quickly. All right, so let's uh, jump back home and just talk customization for a second. So you have this home screen, and this is uh, OnePlus's launcher. Obviously, you could install a third-party launcher like Nova Launcher or Action Launcher or whatever, whatever is your favorite. But um, the, the launcher from OnePlus is pretty standard. It's almost like Google's. It just lacks a couple of features. You have your shelf over here to the left side, which you can customize with recent apps and your contacts. And it tells you a little bit about the performance or what's going on with your phone. You can add other widgets and things like that too. You can long press to get in here and adjust home screens. And this is where you change your wallpaper and add widgets and home settings. I mean, you guys have seen this stuff before. Um, and, and so I'm not going to dive into there, but your home screen setup, I'll, I'll let you guys do, do what you want to do there. But what I do want to talk about is your notification pull down. So this is running Android 8.1. Your notification pull down looks like this. I would say customize this top area, this quick settings area. So you'll notice if I do a single swipe, a single swipe down, I get six shortcuts. So I have Wi-Fi, auto rotate, night mode, battery, flashlight, and do not disturb are my six. So in this area, you want to set up whatever your first six are that you think you will access the most when in this mode, if that makes sense. So we swipe down, it's a little... There's a little pencil button down here, which means edit. And from there, you can rearrange these. And you just grab and drag and you put them wherever you want. And then you let go when you are done. And once you've done that, again, set up those first six. But you can grab some options that are down here. Like maybe I need reading mode up here. I can put that up there. Maybe I like a cast button. I can drag that up there. Uh, maybe I use VPN all the time. I can drag that. You, you get the idea. Um, and then it gives you multiple pages depending on how many are up here. So we'll go back. I do have two pages now. You can see that here. But again, those first six are the ones I would highly recommend that you set up because they're the ones you use most, like toggling Wi-Fi on and off, turning auto rotate, that sort of thing. From there, let's go ahead and talk about buttons. So button setup on this phone, you've got your back home and app switcher. This is a OnePlus phone and they recently introduced gesture. So you can actually make those go away and use a separate setup if you want. Um, let, let, let's, let's dive in and we're going to let you decide which you want to use, but I'll show them both to you. So if we go into settings, there's an option called buttons. So we tap on buttons and the first option up here is called navigation bar and gesture. So a few things in here. Fixed navigation bar is checked. That's where your navigation bar constantly shows up. If you do hide navigation bar, you get this little extra button over here, which means within an app, you can hide your navigation bar. And when you want it to show back up, you just do a little swipe back up and that appears again. So it goes away and you, this is kind of set by app, but you just swipe up and then it comes back and you can toggle it to make it stay on at all times in that app if you want to. Now, if you don't even want to go that, you want to go full new school gesture style, you can choose navigation gestures. And so when we tap that, everything goes away. To use it, we've got a whole video on this I'll link to, but you just swipe up from the bottom and that will take you home. If you swipe up and hold for a second, that brings you into your app switcher. If we want to go back, the back button is on the left or the right side of the middle, if that makes sense. And all you do is just do a little swipe up on the side and that takes you back just like the back button. And again, you can do it from either side. So if I go in here and I want to go back, just swipe up on that side, takes me back. See that? And then if I swipe up here, it takes me back home. Um, and if I swipe up long press, I can get back in up here, swipe up and long press, I can go to this app. So that's kind of how you work with navigation gestures. Um, I will let you guys again decide. I'm going to go with buttons just to keep it simple. Um, but you can decide which you want to go with there. From there, though, there's some other things we need to talk about. So pressing the power button twice for camera, I would certainly leave that on. And that means when you double tap on that button right there, opens the camera. That's the fastest way to get into your camera. You definitely want to leave that in. Enabled. Uh, but there's some other cool things that OnePlus allows you to do with your home buttons. Like you can see there's a home button section, a recents button section, and a back button section. So if you have these enabled, you can do some extra things. Long press, long pressing on your home button opens your assistant. You can, if you don't want it to open Google Assistant, you can actually change that on this phone. You can actually have it do something special if you double tap on it. Same thing goes for the recents button, the long press and double tap and the back button. So you can customize all of these things. For example, long pressing action on the recents button, I have to turn off my screen. So if I just long press that for a second, turns off my screen, which is kind of cool. I can also set up, say a long press on a back button to maybe, 
Well, I could do turn off the screen. I can open and close the menu, a search assistant. I can even open the shelf. I can open split screen. You can customize this to do a whole bunch of different stuff like notification center. So if I long press on that now, it pulls down my notifications. And so that works from wherever. If I'm home and I want to pull down notifications, I just long press on back right now and, and that will do that for me. So there's a lot of stuff going on there with buttons. You can customize everything from whether or not you want traditional buttons, a new school gesture. If you want extra actions within your buttons, you can set that all up in here. From there, we're actually gonna go back a page and we're gonna talk about some different gestures. So there's actually a section right here under buttons called gestures. These are not navigation gestures, these are other gestures. So let's dive in there. And these are just things you may wanna set up. So in gestures, there are things like flipping your phone over to mute it. So if you get a call and you wanna mute it right away, you just flip it over on your desk it'll mute it. You can, you can turn that on if you want. There's a three finger screenshot gesture. So you can take a screenshot by power, by holding power and volume down on this phone, just like it works on all Android phones. Okay. So you can do that, but there's also a three fingered version where you just take three fingers and swipe them on your screen and it takes a screenshot. In, in many ways, it's much handier than doing the double power thing. If you just have a single hand or whatever you need to do, the three finger swipe is actually pretty cool. It's one of those I typically leave there. Um, there is double tap to wake. So if I have double tap to wake, I can double tap on my phone and it will wake it. There isn't a double tap to sleep, I don't believe, or no, there is. They don't tell you that, but there is from the lock screen. So that's uh, that's a setting I definitely use because OnePlus doesn't have an always on display and you may just need to check the time or if you have notifications and double tapping will get you there. Um, so there's some other things then you can actually draw on your on your lock screen to enable things. So I have draw and O right now set to open assistant. So if I'm here and I draw a circle, that should open the assistant, but I have a I have a secure lock, so it doesn't work that well. It does open assistant, but that's just here as an example. But you could have um, an O, or let's say we have a V open the camera, so I can have V open camera. So if I lock that now and I draw a V on there, opens the camera. So you can customize those to um, almost anything you want, and just tap on one and scroll through, and you can see there's apps to choose from if you want to just open an app, record video, or open your flashlight or the shelf. There there are some options in there, and and again these are called these are called gestures. They're different than the navigation gestures, but they are very, very useful features. So the next thing I want to do is we're just going to jump down one setting to status bar. So status bar is this up here where your notifications live. Since we have a notch, you really want to make sure you're getting the most out of the space up there. So I'm going to tap on status bar. And this, this allows you to customize a couple of things, your battery style. So you can have a battery bar like I have, you can change it to a circle if you want or you can hide it so that it doesn't show you your battery at all. I don't, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you, but you could do that. Um, I'm going to go with bar. You can show your network speed. So it shows you at all times what your network speed up and down is. If you're, if you're accessing a network, I don't use that, but you may, uh, but this is the most important one, this icon manager. So in here, because on this right side, again, you have limited space where you have icons that can show because of that notch, you may want to turn some stuff off like the NFC icon. I always turn that off. I don't need to see that giant N logo up there telling me the NFC is on. So I turn that off. Uh, one plus phones typically show a VO LTE or VO Wi-Fi icon as well. If you have that enabled, so you can actually get rid of that icon though and turn it off. I mean, if you don't need to know that you're on Wi-Fi or do not disturb, or if your Bluetooth's on, you can just get rid of those icons or at least hide them for a while. So anyway, that is in settings, status bar, definitely go in and start tweaking that so you don't get some extra cramping up top there. All right, so let's talk about volume settings for a second. If we go into settings, sound and vibration, there's some stuff in here to play with. One of the things I really like, so in Google's Android P, they've changed the default volume setting to control uh, media rather than your phone volume uh, as in your ringer. So when you press volume up or down on Android P, it adjusts the media. So OnePlus actually, since it's not running in Android P yet, has allowed you to decide what you want to do. Do you want to use ringtone volume with your volume rocker or do you want it to default to media volume? So now when I change, because I have it set to that, you can see up top that is changing media, not necessarily my ringer. And of course, if you want to change ringer volume, you just hit the little down arrow and then I could scroll that around if I wasn't on silent mode. Um, but that option is there. Again, this has been on other phones too. Google's finally starting to change it. So OnePlus is giving you the choice between the two. I'm going to set mine at media. Uh, some other things though, I would I would acknowledge is uh, earphones. So if you have headphones plugged in, there is actually an audio tuner in here. You can really customize the sound experience. Um, and then if we keep scrolling, one of those things I like is vibrate intensity. I wish everyone put this in there. Actually, Google's about the only one not doing this, but OnePlus, you can have it 
you can adjust it from light, medium, and strong, depending on what notification is coming in or, or what's happening on your phone. So if you have an incoming call, you may want to set that to strong. Your notifications, medium or strong might be a good option so that you get that extra loud vibrate or extra hefty vibrate in your hand or pocket so you know. Or maybe you have your phone on the desk all the time and light will work for you. And each time you touch on these, they kind of give you some acknowledgement of how strong or light or what medium, what they feel like. So anyways, you can, you can adjust it for calls, notifications, and then when you're tapping the phone. So vibrate on tab, I would certainly set to light unless you like pressing buttons on your phone and having your phone really vibrate in your hand. But light is probably a good option there. Um, there's some other stuff in here like touch sounds and screen locking sounds and screenshot sounds. There's, there's quite a bit of sound settings in here. So dive through there, but those are, those are probably the most important stuff. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do though is scroll all the way down in settings into this advanced section. So in advanced, OnePlus has often put in some extra special features that they don't really know where to put. So they've kind of tucked them into this extra section down here at the bottom that you may not know exists. Uh, but it's got some cool things like you can schedule your phone to power off and power back on. So if you wanted to reboot daily to maybe refresh things and get that fresh uh, experience in the morning, you can you could set it to do that in there. Um, you can also, if we scroll down a little bit, there's a gaming mode where you can you can tweak a couple of things in here so that while you're playing a game, you can block notifications. Um, it can answer phone calls while you're playing over speakerphone, so you can continue playing and answer calls. Um, and then you can add apps to it so that when you launch those, the phone just automatically goes into gaming mode. So if you play a lot of games on your phone, you should check out gaming mode. And that's pretty much it in terms of, well, advanced. I should, let's go into recent app management. So when you, you clear recent apps, which is this button right here, when you clear all of your recent apps, you can tell it to either do a normal clear, which just kind of clears the list and cache without clearing all the background processes. So it doesn't like fully kill all of those apps, or you can do a deep clear, which actually does fully kill down all of those apps. So if you're one of those people that's worried about background processes, possibly hammering battery life, you may want to come in and tweak that setting. All right, so the last thing that we'll talk about in this first 10 things list is in the camera. So I'm going to fire the camera up. So in here, uh, you've got obviously photo, portrait, and video modes. This thing shoots in 4K. It does a bokeh effect in portrait, that sort of thing. And if we go to portrait mode, um, you'll see at the bottom it says it says a depth effect. And there's actually like a person beautification mode that you can turn on and things like that. Anyway, that's how you get between those just by tapping there. Um, however, if we um, swipe up here, you'll find some more modes like there's video and portrait. Um, but slow motions here, pro modes in your time lapse and panorama are also in here. And then up top, there is a settings button. So we're actually going to go in here. And there's a couple of things you may want to consider. So location data, if you want your location tied to photos, you can turn that off or on. Uh, I personally leave it off because I share lots of photos with people and I don't always want people to know exactly where I'm at all times up to you. Um, you do have grid options in here, which you can turn off or on. Um, beauty mode does some extra facial beautification. When you take pictures of people, that means it's doing some heavy processing. You may want to leave that off or play with it. See what you think when you take some pictures of some people's faces, how you think, uh, it turns out. Um, there is a watermark that OnePlus tries to put on some of the first photos you take. You, you may want to go ahead and turn that off. If you, if you're taking photos and in one of the corners, there's a weird little watermark that says shot on OnePlus. This is where you turn that off at. Um, and then there's one other thing. No. Oh, this section right here, save normal photo. Sorry. I knew there was one more thing I want to do. So save normal photo. When, when you're taking a portrait mode, OnePlus tries to use its secondary camera on the back to create, to figure out depth and to create that blur effect and, and whatnot. So if you turn this on, it will not only take a photo with that depth effect or that, that depth measurement or that info, it'll also save a photo without trying to do any of that. So like you can see right here, it says save both photos with and without depth of field enhancement effects. So if you just don't want OnePlus doing some extra processing to your photos and you want them to just come out the way you wanted them to come out, you may want to turn that off. It will save two photos, which will take up some space, but it's just something to keep in mind. All right, that is it. Those are the uh, the first 10 things I think you should do with your OnePlus 6. We'll have tips and tricks shortly, OnePlus 6 review, that sort of thing. If you guys have comments, questions, again, we are here for you. For now, though, we're Droid Life. Peace.